In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We are filled with inestimable joy as we gather to celebrate this Easter morning. The resurrection is the completion of all that Christ undertook, all that he taught, all that he was sent to achieve is captured on this day. Every life is captured by this glorious resurrection. Across the Triduum, across our Holy Week, our cathedral has been filled no more so than today. There are a few seats just in the transept here, for people are standing in all places. So. That is a joy to behold, for it is in itself a witness to the fullness of our faith. I offer Mass for our entire cathedral community, but within that, I ask your prayers particularly for Father Allen's mother, Irene. Pray for his father, Trevor, his brother Paddy, for his mother is now approaching her death, entering that last stage of palliative care in South Africa. Pray for her, pray for her final journey. We entrust her and her family, and Father Allen especially, into the Lord's hands with full confidence to prepare ourselves for the sacred mysteries. We acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee. After John had been preaching baptism, God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and because God was with him. Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God has chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to a true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too, will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following now, came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I'm glad that you all remembered to put your clocks forward and made it on time. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. A very happy Easter to you. We rejoice with the psalmist. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. For the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Our faith is built upon an encounter, a personal encounter with the risen Lord that encounter is expressed in so many different ways. But the resurrection of Christ captures every life, 
recognized or not, acknowledged or not. The whole of creation is captured that it might be redeemed, and it is redeemed in Christ. Having encountered the risen Lord, we are charged with the telling of it. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we enter the house of Cornelius, the Roman. Peter addresses Cornelius and his household, relating his own encounter with the Lord not least the resurrection encounters. Indeed, above all else, the resurrection encounters. He, with his fellow apostles, are witnesses to everything Jesus did. Peter and the others were charged to go forth and proclaim what they had encountered and to share the very content of what they encountered. As a church founded on apostolic foundations, all of us are charged with the same mission, the same duty to proclaim to the world what we have encountered, to proclaim to the world that everything, every human experience is captured by the resurrection. Now the life you and I have is hidden with Christ in God, as we hear in the letter to the Colossians. And we are told that we will be revealed in all our glory with and in Christ. Human beings have a dignity beyond measure but not everyone recognizes that dignity. Sin clouds our judgment, blinds us no less, so that we become incapable of understanding ourselves, of recognizing the true worth of our own humanity. Faith is for the telling. In our gospel, we rejoice with Mary Magdala. We are not given the whole account from John's gospel, for the emphasis is on her task of informing the apostles that the tomb is empty and that she has encountered the Lord, though she does not yet fully understand the experience that she has had. But she is one of the women who attended to the Lord. She is the first witness before Peter and the others. She is charged with telling the apostles what has unfolded. So Mary runs and finds Simon Peter. Because she is confused, for she has not yet grasped what has happened, she declares they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. And so Peter and the other apostle 
whom we presume, for he is not named John, they run. And John's run faster than Peter's. Everyone runs faster than I do. I hope I'm up to the task of the Camino in July when I will be accompanying the young. They'll be waiting for me for hours, having themselves arrived at each staging post. But I will get there eventually, as did Simon Peter. Simon Peter enters the tomb first. First among the apostles, he looks, he sees, he beholds. But he must wait for his encounter with the risen Lord. But in John's Gospel, we are given an insight as to what is left there. I have always been fascinated by the linen clothes. I am a very neat person, fastidious even. I hate things out of place. Anyone who knows me is able to upset me by simply putting something askew, moving a book on my bookshelves and telling me that they've done so, but not telling me which one. I'm easily upset. The linen clothes are not just left. They do not bear witness simply to the fact that the Lord was a neat freak, nor the angels. The linen clothes represent death. Death is not merely the end of life. It is a journey. In our country and elsewhere, there is much debate about assisted suicide, so-called. Death is an integral part of life. Death is not our own possession, for life is not our own possession. Death is not something separate to life. It is part of earthly life, and it is part of eternal life. And life is never, ever disposable. Pain must be confronted and, as best we can, overwhelmed. But to speak of suicide, assisted or otherwise, as bringing dignity to the human condition is built upon so many false premises. On this day of resurrection, we rejoice in life. We rejoice in death understood as but a final journey unto eternity. The linen clothes are attended to with care, for the final journey is critical. The final journey is glorious, no less. Now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. In life, in death, we are revealed through the resurrection of Christ unto glory. Let us rejoice then in the glory that we possess, the glory that we now inherit in Christ. Let us be worthy of what has been entrusted to us. By faith, 
we have encountered the risen Lord. Faith is for the telling. Let us rejoice to bear witness to our own encounter with the risen Lord. Our faith is for the telling. Our faith is for proclamation. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you all, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life.
brothers and sisters, on this truly blessed day, we join our prayers with the family of God throughout the world, rejoicing in the risen Christ who has triumphed gloriously. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, together with all the bishops, that their apostolic witness to the risen Christ may be courageous and bold, generous and true, so that the whole world may hear of the endless love of God. For the family of God gathered here in Easter joy, that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, we may radiate the light of Christ, be strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding in love for God and neighbor. For the newly initiated into the life of the church, that they may always yearn to eat and drink with the risen Christ in his Easter sacrament. For the peoples of the Holy Land, Ukraine, and those parts of the world still bound by the powers of violence and death, that the dawning light of the resurrection will banish the shadows of the tomb and lead to place of healing and a sanctuary of justice. For our beloved dead and for those still crushed by grief, that the light of resurrection hope may comfort those who mourn and surround those who have died. Rejoicing in the prayers and fellowship of the glorious band of apostles, the communion of saints, and the noble army of martyrs, together with the whole company of heaven, who worship before the throne of the victorious Lamb, we seek the prayers of Mary, mother of our joy, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Wonderful in our eyes, O God, is the resurrection of your beloved Son. In your great mercy, receive these our prayers for the sake of him who endured the agony of the cross and now lives as the King of eternal glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord. For our good and peaceful Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts 
we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed Apostle, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him 
and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just two announcements before the blessing. Father Allen wants me to remind you that there is an Easter egg hunt for the children in the grounds afterwards. That is, if I don't nick them before you get there. And there are still seats available uh, in the narthex for our Easter lunch. So you can pay when you arrive. A few more places left if you haven't already arranged. Last evening, I thanked all the teams of the cathedral for their immense work for Holy Week and for the Triduum in particular. May I thank them all, Father Allen, through you, uh, our cathedral dean. And as we said at the beginning of Mass, our thoughts are with you and we give your mother the assurance of our prayers. A blessed day to you all. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. glory, risen conquering sun, heaven is the victory.